Hello, and welcome to Oak Island Theories. In this video, we are going to explore the theory that the Money Pit was constructed by 5th century Coptic Christian refugees from North Africa. Let's take a look. There is a consensus in mainstream academia that the first Old World peoples to visit the New World were the Paleo-Indians, the Stone Age ancestors of the indigenous peoples of the Americas who crossed from Siberia into Alaska via an ancient Bering Strait land bridge from 10 to 20,000 years ago. The second wave of Old World voyagers universally accepted to have reached the New World were the Norse Vikings, who explored and in some cases colonized parts of Greenland, Baffin Island, Labrador, and Newfoundland from the 10th to 14th centuries AD. The third wave of Old World mariners to visit the Americas were European explorers who, following Christopher Columbus's discovery of the Caribbean in 1492, sailed up and down New World coasts and waterways on behalf of the emperors and monarchs who financed them throughout the era known today as the Age of Discovery. Over the years, a handful of historians, archaeologists, and anthropologists have put forth alternative theories regarding pre-Columbian transoceanic contact most of which are roundly condemned by the academic community. Foremost among these scholars was Dr. Barry Fell, a marine biologist and Harvard zoology professor with a flair for epigraphy, the study of inscriptions, and ancient languages, who, in his books America B.C., Ancient Settlers in the New World, Saga America, a startling new theory on the Old World settlement of America before Columbus, and Bronze Age America, argued that, quote, America shares a history with the Old World, unquote, that far predates Columbus's first voyage across the Atlantic. He maintained that mariners of various bygone civilizations, including the Phoenicians, quote, the Carthaginians of Tunisia, the Greeks and Libyans of North Africa, the Romans, the Byzantine Greeks, the Islamic powers of North Africa and Asia, Celts, Iberians, Basques from Spain, earlier Libyans, and men of Egypt and Crete, unquote, not only explored the ancient Americas and traded with their native inhabitants, but also established colonies there, many of which thrived independently for centuries before dying out sometime prior to the Age of Discovery. Fell supports his position with a disturbingly extensive collection of evidence, accumulated by himself and his colleagues James P. Whittle Jr. and Gloria Farley which includes a number of American petroglyphs which appear to depict coherent messages in ancient Old World scripts, a number of American petroglyphs which appear to be crude representations of ancient Old World coins, a number of American petroglyphs suggesting pre-Columbian knowledge of Old World plants, animals, history, culture, religion, and folklore, the observation that ancient Old World coins have been discovered in the Americas in patterns consistent with the theory in question, linguistic similarities between ancient Old World and Amerindian languages, discoveries of what appear to be Old World artifacts, particularly pottery, at New World archaeological sites, and texts written by ancient Old World historians describing ancient transatlantic voyages. Although Fell's thesis has been generally rejected by the academic community, it has also been corroborated by a handful of like-minded scholars some of whom have added even more civilizations to the list of ancient peoples believed to have visited the Americas before Columbus. In this video, we're going to explore one of the theories regarding the nature of the Oak Island treasure and the people who buried it, which hinges upon this controversial premise that ancient Old World civilizations had regular contact with the Americas long before Columbus's 1492 discovery. The oldest theory designating pre-Columbian voyagers as the architects behind Oak Island's underground workings asserts that the Money Pit was created by 5th century Coptic Christians. Coptic Christians are members of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, an Egyptian branch of the Oriental Orthodox Church. Although the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria was officially established in Egypt in 451 AD, the land of the pharaohs had supported a thriving Christian community ever since St. Mark the Evangelist first preached his gospel there in the mid-first century AD. This Egyptian, and particularly Alexandrian, Christian community expanded after Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire in 380 AD, and positively flourished in the wake of the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, which made Alexandria the seat of the Egyptian Diocese of the New Roman Church 
along with the dioceses of Asia, Pontus, Thrace, and the East. In the mid-5th century AD, three schools of Christian theology arose, each one espousing a different doctrine regarding the nature of Christ. This difference in theological opinion caused a rift in the Roman Church, which, following the Council of Chalcedon in 451 AD, saw the Church split into three separate denominations, the Nestorian Church, the Pentarchy, and the Oriental Orthodox Church. The Christian community of Alexandria, Egypt, the city which had served as the head of one of the Roman Church's five major dioceses since 381, split in two as a result of the Council of Chalcedon. A small portion of Alexandria's Christians fell in with the Pentarchy, a church composed of five Episcopal sees, Alexandria, Rome, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Antioch, which would, in the Middle Ages, split to form the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. This Pentarchial Alexandrian church would eventually split into the Greek Orthodox Church of Alexandria, a major branch of the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Coptic Catholic Church, a sui iuris of the Roman Catholic Church. The majority of Alexandrian Christians, on the other hand, adhered to the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, a branch of the newly formed Oriental Orthodox Church. Members of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria, called the Copts, spoke the Coptic language at the time of the Church's establishment. Although the Coptic language, an Egyptian tongue descended from Archaic Egyptian, the language spoken by the Ancient Egyptians, and the Coptic alphabet, a variation of the Greek alphabet which the Coptic language is written in, were gradually supplanted by Egyptian Arabic and the Arabic alphabet, respectively, following the 7th century Arab Muslim conquest of Egypt. They have both survived as a liturgical language and alphabet of the Coptic Church. Although Coptic Christianity was concentrated mainly in Egypt, it quickly spread across North Africa, from the desert of eastern Libya to the Atlas Mountains of present-day Morocco. In the 5th century AD, Germanic tribes from the east migrated west onto Roman territory, having been displaced by the warlike Huns of Central Asia. These Germanic invasions were, in part, responsible for the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. One of these Germanic tribes were the Vandals, a Scandinavian people who migrated south into present-day Poland, southwest through modern-day Germany, France and Spain, and ultimately across the Mediterranean Sea into North Africa, where they established the Vandal Kingdom of Carthage in 435 AD. The Vandals were notorious for their persecution of Nicene Christians, Christians who adhered to the doctrines established by the 325 Council of Nicaea. The Vandals themselves were Arian Christians, adherents to a heretical Christian sect established by an Egyptian Berber priest named Arius in the 3rd and 4th centuries. Immediately upon establishing their kingdom in North Africa, the Vandals seized church property and sent Coptic and Pentarchical Christian bishops into exile. Some church officials, after refusing to convert to Arianism, were tortured and executed. The Vandalic oppression of the 5th and 6th centuries was the first in a long series of persecutions the Coptic Church would endure over the years. After the armies of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian the Great conquered North Africa in the Vandalic War, fought from 533 to 534, the Coptic Christians of North Africa were severely persecuted by the ruling Byzantines, members of the Pentarchical Church of Constantinople. After the Byzantines of North Africa were conquered by the Sassanid Persians in 618, and the Sassanids of North Africa were, in turn, displaced by the Islamic Rashidun Caliphate roughly 20 years later, the Coptic Christians of North Africa were subjected to an Islamic tax called a jizya for centuries. Although the early Muslim conquerors of North Africa treated the Copts quite well compared to members of other Christian denominations which fell under their rule, due to the fact that the Islamic prophet Muhammad preached a special kindness towards the Copts on account of his Coptic Egyptian wife, Maria al kibtiya brutal persecution of the Copts resumed under certain periods of Fatimid rule the Islamic Fatimid Caliphate ruling over all of North Africa from 909 to 1171. Despite that, Islam throughout the centuries has gradually replaced Christianity as the dominant religion in North Africa. The Coptic Church has maintained a respectable presence in North Africa in general, and in Egypt in particular, up to the present day. The late Oak Island theorist George Young, in his book Ancient Peoples and Modern Ghosts, 
outlines his belief that the Coptic Christians who came to Oak Island buried the corpse of an Arif, a lay religious leader whom this particular community of Coptic refugees looked up to as their head in a naturally occurring sinkhole on Oak Island, which would centuries later come to be known as the Money Pit. For as long as it has existed, Coptic Christianity has been more prevalent in Egypt than anywhere else in the world. In the years following the Council of Chalcedon, however, it spread throughout all of North Africa, even reaching the Atlas Mountains of westernmost Morocco. The evidence Dr. Barry Fell and George White have cited in support of their Coptic Christian theory of Oak Island seems to suggest that the Coptic Christians who visited Oak Island were not Egyptian Copts, but rather North African Coptic converts from somewhere west of the Nile Valley. One of the main pieces of evidence suggesting that the Oak Island Copts hailed from Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, or Morocco, rather than Egypt, is the fact that Barry Fell's interpretation of the supposed inscription on the 90-foot stone, a version of the Kempton symbols, is that it is a Libyan Arabic message written in a late Tifana or Libyan Berber script. The Copts of Egypt, until around the 15th century AD, spoke the Coptic language and wrote using the Coptic alphabet. These facts seem to imply that, if Coptic Christians did indeed carve the inscription on the 90-foot stone, they were likely North Africans of Berber descent and not Copts of Egyptian descent. Another piece of evidence suggesting that the Oak Island Copts hailed from the Super-Saharan Maghreb west of Egypt is the fact that another Libyan Arabic inscription discovered by Barry Fell which implies that the Coptic Christians, upon being persecuted by the Vandals, fled across the Atlantic to a land on the far side of the world, and that one of their number returned to North Africa to make the inscription, was found in the Atlas Mountains of eastern Morocco. In Saga America, Harvard zoology professor Dr. Barry Fell claims to have deciphered a 5th century stone inscription, written in Libyan Arabic, at the Figwig Oasis in the Atlas Mountains of eastern Morocco which suggests that 5th century North African Christian monks fled to find refuge in North America after being persecuted by the Vandals. Fell suggests that the author of the inscription was one such Christian monk who sailed to North America and later returned to North Africa to immortalize his tale in stone. According to Fell, the inscription reads, quote, in the name of the hermitage of the fraternity now dispersed abroad, and in the name of the cross of the divine sacrament, by oath sworn to Christ the Lord, of the world emperor crowned Lord Jesus, the testimony of an eyewitness who has returned home by ship that put into Tethwan seaport, now in his homeland a second time. Ended are the years of trouble, filled with compassion for the havoc wrought by the trousered men, of that distinguishing characteristic. We were struck by total ruin in the shape of the Vandals, a contemptible race of no consequence. They destroyed by fire, oh how much, robbing property and stows an affliction as unbearable as the cutting edge of a sword. The misery engulfed the whole world. Followers of the true faith as good as fled into exile. O oh Jesus, grant them thy peace. They decided to sail to Axis Amal, Northland, to seek a livelihood where the sun sets in the evening. They prepared suitable dried fruits to last a long time. They calibrated with numbers a plaque for measurements exact of the elevation of the sun. Sailed away from the coast the United Company, trying to curb their appetite. Carefully they counted how many times the sun rose and shone. Across the trackless wastes their chief precisely directed the helmsman by his secret calculations on the correct track. They journeyed on contented with their lot far away to that land inspired with zeal. They reached their destination, and into the wilderness ventured, the void of surging waves they had overcome by adhering to their plan. Pray for our friends, each one. Bless them, O Jesus." Unquote. Also in Saga America, Fell claims that the Kempton symbols, allegedly inscribed on Oak Island's 90-foot stone, actually form a message in a Libyan Arabic dialect, written in a late Libyan Tifinos script. He believes that the 90-foot stone was inscribed by these Coptic Christian refugees who fled to North America in around 500 AD. In his book, Fell includes an illustration of the symbols he interpreted, a copy of which he claims to have received from one Phyllis Donahue. At first glance, it appears as if Fell's symbols are just the Kempton symbols upside down. However, upon closer inspection, it is evident that, in addition to being upside down, Fell's symbols differ from the Kempton symbols in a number of ways. 
Fell does not explain whether the Libyan Tifinos slash Libyan Arabic message in his book, which he claims to have received from Phyllis Donahue, is a copy of the inscription on the 90-foot stone created independently of the Kempton symbols, or a subtly altered imitation of the Kempton symbols. According to Fell, the inscription, when translated, reads, To escape contagion of plague and winter hardships, he is to pray for an end or mitigation, the Arif. The people will perish in misery if they forget the Lord, alas. Fell explains that an Arif is a, quote, presenter in charge of a small congregation lacking an ordained priest of the North African Coptic Church, unquote. In Saga America, Fell does not presume to speculate as to the nature of what, if anything, these Coptic Christian refugees buried on Oak Island. One Oak Island researcher who elaborated upon Barry Fell's theory was George Young, a professional surveyor from Nova Scotia and a naval veteran of both World War II and the Korean War. In his book, Ancient Peoples and Modern Ghosts, Young argues the refugee Coptic Christians from Fell's Saga America fleeing the depredations of the Vandals, sailed to the New World by a route that had once been used by Phoenician, Carthaginian, and Ptolemaic Greek-Egyptian mariners. Young also subscribes to Fell's theory that two of the many Old World peoples to explore the New World and trade with its natives long before Christopher Columbus's 1492 discovery were the ancient Phoenicians and their North African cousins, the Carthaginians, both of whom Fell and Young believed established permanent colonies in the Nova Scotia area. This route ran through the Strait of Gibraltar, up the Portuguese-Spanish coast towards the English Channel, northwest to Iceland, west to Greenland, and down the Canadian-American Atlantic coast, perhaps as far south as Florida. Young maintains that a company of Coptic refugees, upon arriving in what is now Nova Scotia, appointed an Arif, or lay religious leader, as their general leader. When the Arif died, his followers buried him in a natural sinkhole, the Money Pit and marked his resting place with a 90-foot stone. That accomplished, the Arif's Coptic followers constructed the Smith's Cove and South Shore Cove flood tunnels, booby traps to protect their late leader's tomb from being looted, reminiscent of the protective devices their ancient Egyptian forebears had constructed beneath the pyramids of Giza nearly two millennia earlier, in order to preserve the tombs of the pharaohs. Young argues that Harry Marshall's statement Harry Marshall being the son of Edward Marshall, who, along with Herbert Crichton, co-owned a book bindery in Halifax at which the 90-foot stone was put on display from 1890 until its disappearance in the 1930s, that the 90-foot stone appeared to be made of porphyry may support his theory, as porphyry was a stone used extensively by the ancient Egyptians, the ancestors of the Copts. Another piece of evidence which Young suggests might support his theory are the three links of gold chain discovered at depth by the Truro Company in 1850. Young speculates the chain links might be rings of ceremonial male armor in which the Copts dress the corpse of their Arif before interring him in his tomb. What are your thoughts on the Coptic Christian theory of Oak Island? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel, please check out the Oak Island Encyclopedia by clicking the link in the description.